hey, hey, what is up? So, money, prosperity, really, it's about prosperity. Another dose. Um, this one is pretty straightforward. You get to redefine success. You're going to take that word and you're going to contemplate on it. You're going to pay attention to what your stories are around it and you're going to redefine it. And this is so much fun because it all comes back to how we, how you're viewing the world. Like what are the stories we're telling ourselves? What are we, what are we marinating ourselves in? Right? It's, oh, like the trees are effortlessly growing the sun. It just keeps coming up and I trust it fully. Clouds are moving, everything's circulating. And even when the clouds block the sun, I think that we all trust the sun is still there. It was this beautiful revelation when my daughter first took a flight in the rain. And then we got up to 30,000 feet. And she's like, mommy, the sun is out. I said, it's always out. She said, oh, so the clouds just come in underneath it. It's not that the sun goes away when the clouds are out. I said, no, the sun is always shining. May the sunshine always be upon us, right? So we know this. And if you're operating from a place where you have all these attachments and stories and judgments, then that's what you're vibrating, right? And then it becomes what you're looking for because I always say like that, that, energy is everything and energy is going to, is going to literally, you're going to resonate with the same frequencies. So if you have a certain story around what success looks like, then you choose into that experience, right? So for example, if like success to you looks like a certain number in the bank account, right? You're choosing this experience because when I have this much in the bank, then that is a reflection of my success. That is my success story. And that if I don't have it, then I'm not successful and I'm not enough. So now you get to question like, well, what is your definition of success, right? What have you attached to it? If everything that you're doing is not in alignment with what you want, then you, then you have a story, right? That I'm not enough until, then you have these conditions. That's what you're vibrating in. It's lack, it's lack, it's scarcity. It's like, I'm not enough as I am right now. So um, since I'm not worthy, I'm going to try to seek these things outside of myself. So when you keep saying like, you know, when I get the body, then I'll be happy. When I have the money in my bank account, then I'll be successful, right? When the business reaches this, this status, then I have arrived then I can take a break, then I can feel free. I'm trying, right? I'm trying. These are all just statements that, that declare that you're going to stay in the trying, right? So it's like, well, what if you just get to be done trying and not giving up? I mean, like done trying. And I, I for years as a fitness coach, I always play with this, like this, no trying. The famous line, from, oh, I can't remember what movie it is now and I'll butcher it anyway, but, but you're either going to commit or not. My gymnastics coach always used to say that, like you're, you commit to the somersault or not. Cause if you commit halfway, you're going to fall on your head and break your face. I and mean, these are his words, right? So it, it's like, what if you just get to be done? Right? What if you're like, I'm just done, done with the struggle, done with the hardship. I now own my wholeness and in alignment to who I am, knowing that I already have everything I require inside of me, there's no fight with anything, right? It becomes kind of futile that we're constantly fighting our body, fighting our life experience, fighting being human because everything in this life, everything that we're experiencing is for you to call forth your highest light. So anything else is really just a story that we've attached around like sacrifice and struggle. And then it, and it really is a physical addiction, right? We're, we actually become addicted to those chemicals and experiences that you've been creating 
which is all perfect because it's exactly what the central nervous system is designed to do, keep us safe and then secrete all the potent hormones so that we can most definitely repeat them until they become a habit and then a temperament, a behavior, ultimately our personality and then, and then our identity on a totally unconscious autopilot, right? So when I say like operating in a, in a poverty frequency, it's it like it's so normal. And your gorgeous opportunity here is to notice all of it, to simply step in and become aware of it and pay attention. And once we do that, we then take our power and we, cre we create a new way, right? A new way of being human, one that is plugged into your soul, which lies beyond your identity, which is formed from your beliefs and your opinions. And it means you're free from your own self-judgment and your attachment and your expectations of what you thought success needed to look like in order to feel free. You get to actually just experience being free and at peace right now. So breathe that in. Let that land in your system. Open your heart to that. And then look at the alignment to everything happening in your life right now. What are you seeing? What are you receiving? What are your, what are your thoughts going on in your head? What are the words that you're choosing around what success looks like? Right? What are your feelings about things in the world? Like, like oh, you know, working with these people sucks or, you know, having to deal with this sucks or I hate my body or I don't want to pay these bills or my money's running out or, you know, every single time you see your bank account, you know, and you go, ah, oh, I don't want to pay the bills. You're re-anchoring in that same chemical addiction to like, I'm stuck. I hate, I never have enough. I'm a victim, sacrifice, struggle, so on and so forth. Right. Then you again, generate that like yearning outside of yourself. When I get here, I will be successful. But until then, I, I can't. So is that really successful? Right? Is that really successful when we're, we never actually get there? Success is like, does my, is my heart beating right now? The beautiful quote that I love to remind myself of all the time. And it is, if my heart beats in this minute, I, I'm butchering the quote a little. If my heart beats in this moment, and I have ground beneath my feet, then I know I have the life force and energy to take the next step. Isn't that success? Right? So we get to redefine that. What does success look like now? Notice how you're vibrating in this whole experience of lack, right? You're not vibrating, I am whole. And you're like, I have to go get success outside of myself because it has to look this way in order for me to be happy and I'm going to chase it and then when I get it, let's say you do get it, then you live in fear of losing it so you can't really ever feel truly happy because you're still you're still trapped oh my god, I don't want to lose it, so now I have to do everything I can to, to hang on to it right? it's like the analogy I've used before taking a breath and hold it for fear of not being able to get another one or that the air is going to run out well, it's going to leave you dead, right? So, if you're not vibrating, I am whole, I am fulfilled, I am satisfied, like, ah, oh, there's an abundance of people everywhere, and people to serve, and to love, and to give to, and opportunities, and wow, life is so abundant, there's, there's ideas everywhere, it's all available, there is nothing I, I seek that I can't have, right? It's two very different vibrations. So you get to just notice and witness where you're at and just tune in to, to your frequency. What's there? What's underlying? What are, what are, again, go back and look at your parents' stories from the other prosperity dose and what they taught you, what, what programs were built into you, right? Like wealthy people are, are greedy and, you know, poor people are dumb or, money money is going to run out we have to hoard what we have 
um, whatever those were, whatever whatever those traumas were, experiences uh, that you had that left you feeling and questioning your own self worth, right? And and if you look at them right now and you shame them or notice that there's anything creating any type of fight against your humanness, it's time to just take full ownership for it, right? And and here's the, the last point I want to make in this. It's, it's not, you know, this is exactly why you have what you have in your life. And this is what you've been committed to. And if you've done the commitment cleanse, then you know this. And you have this gift of coming back into your system and, and just look at it. Feel it fully. Receive it all so you can heal it. And then micro-align each of those thoughts as they come up. Right? The beliefs, the behaviors that are out of alignment and just energy exfoliate, bring them back into alignment with what you say you actually want. If that's what you actually want and you're not there yet, then, then you get to clean that up, right? That's an awesome opportunity. And you have the ability to literally change the trajectory of your life in any moment. And it's how diligent you are into noticing. So bottom line is too, the old programs don't matter, right? It's, it's We want to notice them. We want to become aware of them. It's great to be aware of them at that core wound because that's imprinted in your physiology. But it doesn't require you to keep digging and digging and digging because that's just going to keep you in the core wound and reflecting more and more and more and more experiences. In between the, you know, like the mental masturbation and the and like kind of this spiritual bypass where we just think the thinking, right? is the sweetest spot of personal human power. To notice it, right? This is why the energy exfoliation is so key. Notice it, feel it, receive it all in appreciation and love. Choose your new truth, one that is in alignment with what you're saying you want. Embody it in the physical with all the tools that you now have access to because everything is accessible. And then micro-align each thought, belief, behavior, that comes up to match to that frequency of what you want to be experiencing. So bring it back and then look at it, right? What is your new story of success? If you keep speaking the stories that, you know, success looks a certain way, then you're going to have that as your story. So do you truly want to embody abundance? How do you embody abundance? I am the embodiment of abundance. I am the embodiment of self-worth. I am the embodiment of radical self-acceptance. I am the embodiment of self-love. Everything is simply embodiment, which is your level of vibration, what you are vibrating at, right? So it's simply to see what are you vibrating at right now? And could you choose differently? And could you feel differently? Could you support that, right? So when you're telling yourself, I have to do X, Y, Z to be enough, and that was what success looked like, are you embodying self-acceptance? Are you embodying worthiness? Or is that actually speaking like, I'm not enough until I get X, Y, Z, or this, this thing happens? So that's why you keep receiving that as a reflection. Boom. Boom. Things keep showing up, not working out. You make some money, you lose some money, there's never enough. Oh, okay. Now you see that's all oh, because I wasn't in alignment. Those words that that I was saying, the thoughts I keep thinking, the beliefs, they weren't in alignment with my embodiment of prosperity. What is your definition of 